بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم اینڈ ویلکم ٹو انادر لیکچر آن ٹول اینڈ ڈائی ڈیزائن وی آر آن ماڈیول ون اینڈ وی آر ڈسکسنگ ڈیزائن آف فکسچرز اینڈ جگس ان پریویس سیریز آف سیگمنٹس وی ڈسکسڈ پارٹ لوکیشن ان فکسچرز اینڈ جگس سو وی ڈسکسڈ ڈفرینٹ پرنسپلس آف لوکیٹنگ اینڈ سپورٹنگ اے پارٹ ان اے فکسچر آف جگ and we discuss different methods of locating and supporting a part in fixtures and jigs now we are going to start our discussion on clamping a part in fixtures and jigs and here we will discuss different principles as well as different methods and devices of clamping blanks and parts in in fixtures and jigs so at the end of this lecture you should be able to understand the purpose of clamps in fixtures and jigs you should be able to understand some guidelines for using clamping devices in fixtures and jigs and you should be able to understand some commonly used methods and devices of clamping like strap clamps toggle clamps screw clamps cam clamps wedge clamps and uh, power clamping like pneumatic and hydraulic clamps The main purpose of a clamping device in fixtures and jigs is to restrict the directions of movements not restricted by location. So we discussed in detail different methods of locating a part in fixtures and jigs and we performed different activities where we saw in a certain situation how many degrees of freedom were restricted by a, a locating device or, or a method. and these clamps should also securely hold the position of the part against the locator throughout the machining cycle so that is also very important and that is the main purpose of uh, using clamps to restrict the remaining degrees of freedom and uh, hold the uh, blank in the required position throughout the machining cycle so in in simple words clamping prevents the part from shifting or being pulled from the fixture or jig during the machining operation so here we will discuss some basic rules of clamping the first one is the clamp must be strong enough to hold the part and resist movement so first point is the strength so clamping need to be strong and rigid enough to hold the blank firmly during the machining operation the part should not move or it, it doesn't uh pull out of the jig or fixture secondly clamps must be positioned so that they do not interfere with the operation of the tool or machine for example in this case a drilling operation is to be performed uh, on the part so the drilling uh, force will be downward that is the tool force and there will be a, re a reactive force in the opposite direction so that will tend to pull the part out of the jig or fixture uh, in this direction secondly because of the uh, rotational movement of the drill the part will have a tendency of rotation as well so the position of the clamping element and uh, the uh, and the force of clamping should be strong enough so that the part doesn't move in either of these directions so in this case we are using a screw clamp uh, in order to make sure that part doesn't pull out of the jigger fixture and it doesn't rotate as well and you can see that uh, for example in this case this is the direction of uh, clamping force so this clamping force is resisted by Uh, these locators so for this screw this locator is resisting the clamping force and for for this one uh, these two locating pins are resisting the clamping force so clamp itself is resisting the forces generated because of cutting but there is a force applied by these uh, clamping elements as well so that must be actually resisted by uh, some elements in the the body of jigger fixture and preferably by by the locating element so we discussed this in our discussion on locating elements as well that these locators should be strong enough 
to resist the clamping forces as well as to resist the uh, machining forces. And you, you may notice that the direction of clamping or the position of clamp actually is like that it doesn't interfere the direction of machining. So this is the direction of machining. So machining to, is to be performed at this point. So clamp is positioned such that it doesn't interfere that, that machining operation. So same you can observe here. This is our part. We have seen this jig repeatedly. So this will be the uh, direction of machining, the direction of the drill bit. So again, the part will have a tendency to move out of the jig. So this clamp must make sure that it doesn't move, the part doesn't move during the machining, as well as the position of clamp is not interfering the direction of cutting. The third uh, principle is that clamp must not damage or deform the part. So clamping force should be uh, enough to hold the workpiece in the required position during machining, but these forces should not be too much so that the part is uh, deformed. So clamp should always contact the work at its most rigid point. The part must be supported uh, if the work is clamped at a point where the force could bend the part. So here is the example. So uh, here the clamp is uh, contacting the workpiece. So this is the direction of clamping forces. So there is no support for the part so it can bend. So we can either change the position of clamps or we can provide some support to the, to the part in this case to avoid bending of the part. So here is another example. So this, this is our blank, this circular piece. So this is a thin part. So if we apply clamping force in this fashion as is shown, so the part could damage. So it's preferable to hold the part from above, from this surface, instead of holding it from, from the side as is shown here. So this is a preferred method uh, than this one. So in this case, we are using a, a strap clamp that we will discuss in one of the following segments. The clamp must allow rapid loading and unloading of the part. So Clamp must be quick acting. So that is one of the features of jigs and fixture that loading and unloading of the part should be quick. So the clamping time should not be too much uh, and part should take lesser time to load and unload. The clamping system should comprise of less number of parts for ease of design, operation and maintenance. So same principle we discussed for look Cutting elements as well, and in fact, in general, uh, for the jig and fixture as a whole, that it should comprise lesser number of parts for ease of manufacturing operation as well as maintenance. Clamping method should be foolproof and safe. Human factors must be considered while deciding the clamping system. And finally, the wearing part should be hard or hardened and also be easily replaceable. So if there is a wearing surface, uh, there should be some heat treatment done or other uh, operation should be used to make that surface hard. So it doesn't wear out and we have a longer life of the jig or fixture. Thank you very much.